The Ilyushin Il-40 was a two-seat Soviet jet-engined armored ground attack aircraft. The first prototype flew in 1953 and was very successful except when it fired its guns, as their combustion gases disturbed the airflow into the engines and caused them to flame out or hiccup. Remedying this problem took over a year and involved the radical change of moving the engine air intakes all the way to the very front of the aircraft and repositioning the guns from the tip of the nose to the bottom of the fuselage, just behind the nose wheel. The aircraft, now resembling a double-barreled shotgun from the front, was ordered into production in 1955. Only five production aircraft had been completed before the entire program was cancelled in early 1956 when the VVS discarded its close air support doctrine in favor of tactical nuclear weapons on the battlefield. Development Sergei Ilyushin had begun design studies during 1950 Euro 51 for a jet-engined ground attack aircraft possessing better performance characteristics than was possible with piston-engined aircraft. By the end of 1951 the Ilyushin Design Bureau had prepared a technical proposal for a two-seat armored aircraft using two Makulin AM-5 axial flow turbojets rated at 2,150 kg forces at maximum power and 2,700 kg forces with afterburner. In January 1952 Ilyushin sent this proposal to the government, which was quickly accepted, and he was directed to design and build one prototype. The Eel 40 had wings set low on the fuselage, swept back at an angle of 35 a degree, and a tricycle undercarriage. The two AM-5 engines were in pods adjacent to the fuselage. As was traditional for Ilyushin ground attack aircraft the core of Eel 40's structure was a load-bearing armored shell that protected both crew positions, six fuel tanks and part of the radio and electrical equipment. The thickness of the shell ranged from 3 to 8 mm in thickness. The armored bulkhead protecting the pilot from the front was 10 mm thick. The cockpit glazing was also bulletproof and the pilot was given an 8 mm armored headrest to protect him against shells fired from above and behind. The gunner was protected by armor for a Euro 10 mm thick. The total weight of the armored shell and the bulletproof glass was 1,918 kg. Ejection seats were provided for both crew members. Three perforated air brakes were fitted on the rear fuselage, one on each side and one underneath, to enhance the aircraft's maneuverability during a dive. The initial armament was six 23mm Neudmann Richter NR23 autocannons mounted in the nose, three on each side, each with 150 rams with their muzzles protruding into the slipstream. One NR-23 was mounted in a remotely controlled Eel K-10 tail barbette with 200 rounds. It had a maximum elevation of 55 a degree, a maximum depression of 40 a degree and could traverse 60 a degree to either side. The Eel K-10 could traverse at a rate of 42 a degree per second and elevate at a rate of 38 a degree per second. Four small bomb bays were fitted in the wings with a maximum capacity of 100 kg each. Alternatively four bomb racks could be fitted under the wings that could carry bombs up to 500 kg, 82 mm TRS-82 or 132 mm TRS-132 rockets, or drop tanks with a total capacity of 1,100 litres. The normal bomb load was 400 kg, but 1,000 kg could be carried at overload. Under overloaded conditions a maximum of 12 TRS-82 or 8 TRS-132 rockets could be carried. Two cameras were fitted in the rear fuselage for day and night damage assessment photos. First flown on March 7, 1953, flight tests revealed no serious shortcomings in the air. The operational CG was too far aft, but this was only a minor problem when landing, taking off and taxiing especially when coupled with the rather short wheelbase. The biggest problem proved to be the guns and their effect on the engines. During the first aerial test of the cannons at the end of March 1953 the muzzle flash temporarily blinded the pilot and both engines flamed out. The pilot was able to restart the engines and made it back safely, but Sergei Ilyushin immediately started an investigation into the cause of the engine problems. Ground tests with high-speed cameras revealed that none of the muzzle brakes or blast suppressors tested made any difference. 
the engines would hiccup even if only a single gun fired just 5 to 10 rounds. A decision was made to replace the 6 NR23 guns in the nose with 4 AM23 cannon with 225 rounds per gun that had a rate of fire 50% greater than that of the NR23 and to totally revise the gun installation. The guns were moved to the very tip of the nose in a separate compartment made of heat-resistant steel and provided with a special blast deflector chamber to deflect the blast gases away from the engine inlets. Two doors were provided at the bottom of the chamber to ventilate the chamber while firing. One problem occurred almost immediately during testing when the blast gases accumulated in the section where spent cartridges and links were saved and sometimes ignited. Occasionally this was strong enough to actually deform the chamber. The spent shell case section was thoroughly ventilated and muzzle brakes were introduced to successfully cure the problem. Resolving the problem with the guns have prevented the aircraft from undergoing its state acceptance trials in July 1953 as stipulated and a special commission was appointed to conduct the trials on December 31, 1953. After the manufacturer's trials were successfully concluded in January 1954 the aircraft was turned over and the state acceptance trials lasted from January 21 to Euro March 15, 1954. The tests were generally successful with the Eel 40 proving to be easy to fly, maneuverable enough to be a handful for the MiG-15 bis and MiG-17 fighters opposing it and considerably superior to the piston-engined Ilyushin Eel 10M ground attack aircraft then in service. However fight tests did reveal blast gas ingestion when firing in a side slip by the engine on the side opposite the side slip. Several solutions were evaluated to cure the problem. But Ilyushin pushed for the more radical solution of extending the air intakes for the engines all the way to the nose of the aircraft and moving the guns to the bottom of the nose, behind the air intakes. The change in position of the guns and the extension of the air intakes, which looked uncannily like a double barreled shotgun, allowed the nose wheel to be moved forward to lengthen the wheelbase. The guns were mounted behind the nose wheel well and a special shield was added to protect the gun barrels from debris thrown up by the nose wheel. It was mechanically linked to the nose wheel and extended when it did. Other changes included the replacement of the original AM5F engines by the Tumansky Rogue 9V, an improved version of the AM5F, the normal bomb load was increased to 1,000 kg and 1,400 kg in overloaded condition, and a rear view mirror was added to allow the pilot to better observe the rear upper hemisphere. Production Ilyushin began construction of another prototype to evaluate this solution and this was endorsed on October 16, 1954 when the Council of Ministers ordered production to begin at Factory No. 168 at Rostov-on-Don of the improved version, designated as the Il-40P. The Il-40P prototype first flew on February 14, 1955 and began state acceptance trials on October 12, 1955. The changes had resolved all the problems suffered by the earlier design and an order for a first batch of 40 production machines was placed. Five of these had been completed by the spring of 1956 and were undergoing pre-flight tests when the entire program was cancelled on April 13, 1956 and all components in preparation scrapped. A week later, the attack aviation branch of the VVS was superseded by the fighter-bomber branch and the doctrine of the VVS was drastically modified. No longer would the VVS provide close support to the army, but rather it would use tactical nuclear weapons as part of the nuclear battlefield. Before the program was cancelled two variants had been studied by Ilyushin. The first was an artillery spotting version known as the Il-40K. This model added a third crewman in a redesigned forward fuselage. The air intakes were reverted to their original position as the guns had been placed in the small wing bomb bays and there wasn't any danger of the engines ingesting blast gases from the guns. The spotter navigator was given an extensively glazed position at the tip of the nose that was well protected with armor and bulletproof glass. The first fuselage was nearing completion when the order came to cancel the entire program. The second variant was a torpedo-carrying version called the Il-40T which was based on the fuselage of the Il-40K, but the Navigator Bombardier's position had optically flat glass panels to facilitate aiming. Not much effort was devoted to this model and it was cancelled at an early stage. Variants, Il-40 Euro first prototype, 
EL 40 PA Euro second prototype and five production aircraft. EL 40 KA Euro a Euro artillery spotter, three seater with spotter navigator in glazed nose cockpit. EL 40 TA Euro a Euro torpedo bomber, three seater with navigator in glazed nose with optically flat panels for weapon aiming. EL 42 a Euro late 1960s revival of the EL 40 concept, beaten in competition with the Sukhoi T 8. EL-102 a Euro ultimate iteration of the EL-40 slash EL-42, with modern avionics and engines, also beaten by the Sukhoi T-8. Specifications, data from Gordon, O.K. Bielyushin, A History of the Design Bureau and its Aircraft, General Characteristics, Crew, 2, Length, 17.215 meters, Wingspan, 17 m, Height, 5.76 m, Wing Area. 54.1 mass squared, empty weight, 8,500 kilograms, loaded weight, 16,600 kilograms, max takeoff weight, 17,600 kilograms, power plant, Tua, Tumansky Road 9V turbojet, dry thrust, 2,600 kilogram forces each, thrust with afterburner, 3,250 kilogram forces each. Performance, maximum speed, 993 km per hour, range, 1,320 km, service ceiling, 11,600 m, wing loading, 31.5 kg mass squared, armament, guns, 4 a AM-2323 mm cannon in the fuselage nose, 1 a AM-2323 mm cannon in remotely controlled rear turret, bombs, up to 1,400 kg of bombs in four wing bomb bays and four underwing pylons carrying bombs, rockets, or drop tanks. See also Related development, Ilyushin Il 102, aircraft of comparable role, configuration, and era, Sukhoi Su 25, A 1 Sky Raider, Alenia G 91, A 10 Thunderbolt 2. Notes References